In chapter 3, we're going to cover exponential and log functions. Starting in section 3.1, we're going to begin with exponential functions. And to understand exponential functions, we're going to learn how to evaluate them and we're going to learn how to graph them as well. To first understand what it means to be an exponential function, the definition of an exponential function is f of x equals b to the x power, or we know that f of x is also the same thing as y, just depending on if we want it in function notation or not. So it could be the same thing or comparable to y equals b to the x power. Now a couple conditions is the b has to be positive, so in other words your base has to be positive and it has to be a constant other than 1. So, it's got to be greater than 0, but it can't be equal to 1, which means your base could be a 1 half, it could be a 1 fourth, or it could be a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, or so, so forth, anything in between. Okay? Now, we know what it means to be an exponent, but there's a difference in saying here is um, an exponent versus an exponential function. And you can see these examples down here. Some of the examples are f of x equals 2 to the x power, g of x equals 10 to the x power, h of x equals 3 to the x plus 1 power, or 1 half to the x minus 1 power. Now what makes these exponential is, first of all, by the definition, the base, all of them are positive constants, 2, 10, 3, and 1 half that are greater than 0 but can't actually be 1. But what makes them an exponential function is the fact that they have an x or a variable as the exponent versus some of the stuff that we've seen. So this first one here, 2 to the x power, is considered exponential versus x squared. x squared is not considered an exponential function. It has an exponent, but it's not an exponential function because the base has the variable. So another condition or the um, definition of an exponential function is now you're going to have a variable in the exponent versus um, what we've seen in the past where your base could have the variable but we've never had an exponent that was a variable. We've had exponents that were uh, positive, negative, um, we can have exponents that are uh, rational, we can have a fraction exponent. So you can kind of look through all these ones that are um, not considered exponential, and the explanations are there, of course, the x squared because the variable is the base, not the exponent. 1 to the x power is not going to be exponential because a um, couple different reasons. First of all, the condition says that your base can't be equal to 1, and the reason for that is no matter what you would plug in for x there, 1 to the first power is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is 1, 1 to the fourth power is 1. So no matter what you plug in, your answer is still going to be 1, so that doesn't constitute um, exponential. Um, and then of course negative 1, it can't be negative, your base can't be negative. Um, back up here it does say that your base does have to be greater than 0, which means it can't be negative. And then of course x to the x power, you have a variable as the base and the exponent. Okay, so to understand what it means to be exponential, um, since we're going to be graphing these, you have to know how to plug these in. So for instance, if I was going to graph something like that and I needed for whatever reason to plug in um, a square root of 5, I need to know how to plug in 2 and if I said let x be equal to the square root of 5, I need to know how to plug that into my calculator. So you will see some of this in your homework and this is going to just basically come down to you have to know how to work your calculator. Every calculator is different. Um, so depending on the calculator, um, you need to make sure that you do know how to get the correct answer. Now depending on your calculator, so you will have to know how to work your calculator. If you plug something like 3 to the square root of 5 into your calculator, and let's say we round it to three decimal places, you should get 11 point six six five and with calculators there's a couple different um, possible symbols that you will see um, the x to the y power button um, sometimes some calculators will have an x to the y button um, that will be a button that has an exponent um, some calculators 
have it's an upside down V looking symbol. It's called a caret key. Um, that sometimes will do exponents. So you're just going to have to look at your calculator and know how to work it. Um, but here's a couple that you can practice um, working on your calculator with. 3 to the square root of 5 will give you 11.665. On the calculator that's just on the computer, of course it may default to just the standard, but if you um, click on the calculator that's on your computer, go to view and click scientific, um, you will see the X to the Y button. Um, so to do something like 3 to the square root of 5, we would do 3 and then we would hit the XY button and um, you can see that when you do that, if you hit 3 and then the XY button, you will see that little upside down V which is just indicating, okay, this is 3 and then we're going to raise this to whatever power we, we decide. And on this one it's the uh, square root of 5, so on this calculator you have to actually put 5 and then hit the square root. And that's where we get the 11.665 because I've got the 4, 7. It's actually 11.6647, so the 7 tells me to round that up to a 5, and that's how we got 11.665. So again, that would be 3. And then I hit the exponent button, and, and I, if I hit square root 5, I'm going to get the wrong answer. But on, And you got to know your calculator, but on this one, you hit 3, and then raise to the, so it's I'm ready to hit the exponent, and then it's the 5, and then the square root. And in the window of your calculator, if you use the calculator on the computer, it says 3 with the exponent symbol, and it says square root 5. So hit equals, and we get 11.665 on that one. Now... Another thing that we're going to get into is this one has a base of E. Now we're going to talk about what that E means um, here in just a little bit, but again, you should have an E button on your calculator. And again, to kind of check yourself on this one, if you find that E button, it's usually probably going to be around the word log. If you have a calculator that has the log button or an LN button, it'll be somewhere around there. Um, and it's usually, um, the button that you'll usually see is e to the x, uh, because e is actually not a variable. And like I said, in um, a little bit later um, in this section, we will actually talk about that e and what it means. Um, but you should see a, a button in your calculator, e to the x, so you'll hit that, plug in 2.3, and if you've done it correctly, you should get 9.974. Okay, so to show you how to do that if you are just using the calculator on the computer, if you pull it up again, of course it's still in scientific view. Um, you have to hit, notice I have on the calculator um, an LN button, a log button. Um, those are the things that we're going to be using in this section, the logs. Um, but you, you'll see a button um, just below, it should be on the top left of the calculator that has INV, which is just um, going to change this to the inverses of all the buttons that I have. So for instance, you can see that you have sine, cosine, tangent, natural log, or this LN button. Um, if I hit inverse, then it changes to E to the X, sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one. So it's giving me the inverse buttons. Um, and we'll kind of, we'll get into that why I knew to do that and why I know that uh, the inverse uh, would change that. We're actually going to get into that in chapter 3. But for this one, you should see now your E to the X button, just to the right of the inverse button. And on this one, if I hit E to the X first, it, it gives me something funny in the window. So you do have to make sure that whatever you want to take the uh, exponent of, you have to put in, for instance, on this one I want to find E to the 2.3. I need to put in the 2.3 first and then hit the E to the X button and that's how we get the 9.974 that we, that we have up here. Okay, so practice those. Make sure you can work through those. Um, more importantly, make sure you know how to work your own calculator because this is just a matter of plugging it into the calculator. Okay, so that just gives us an idea of what it means to be exponential. Now we're ready to actually graph some of these exponential functions. And graphing exponential functions, um, there are some characteristics that can help us 
get these graphed and check our answer. Um, so it's going to be important. It's a good thing to know these characteristics and go ahead and have them memorized. Um, the first thing is it says that the domain of your exponential, but we're just talking about just for these characteristics, if it's in the form of b to the x, so 1 half to the x or 2 to the x or 3 to the x or 4 to the x, it wouldn't work for something like 4 to the x plus 1. It wouldn't work for that. The exponent has to be just an x, so just 4 to the x, 5 to the x, 6 to the x, so forth. Okay, so these characteristics are only specific to this form. Um, the domain is going to be all real numbers. And the range is going to be from 0 to infinity, but 0 doesn't have a bracket on it. Okay, so that will always be your domain and always be your range. Um, the graphs for number 2 down here will always, so let's kind of highlight the important stuff. Um, let's see, domain and range. Um, number 2 is the graphs will always cross through the point 0, 1. So in other words, they have a y-intercept at positive 1. Okay. And that's because if you're graphing b to the x and you plug in 0 for x, anything to the 0 power, if you plug in 0 for x, it's always going to give you 1. So that would just be, you could do the math and still find that out, but it is just a shortcut if you know that it's always going to be 0 and 1. Um, 3 and 4, the characteristics talk about the shape of the graph. And it says that if your base is greater than 1, then the graph is going to be increasing. So from left to right, it's going to be going up. So you can see that over here on your diagram, it is this graph. So from left to right, it's going to be increasing as long as your base is greater than 1. Okay, so 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, so forth. Now we also know that our base can't be negative. We define that. But if your base is between 0 and 1, so if it's 1 third to the x, 1 half to the x, 1 fourth to the x, 2 thirds to the x, so in other words, if your base is a fraction between 0 and 1, then at this point, the graph is going to be, from left to right, decreasing. So this is this purple graph over here. It's still going to go through 0, 1, but the graph is just going to be decreasing. So they, you can see on the, the graph over here, they have the exact same shape. They're going to go through the point 0, 1. They're going to go left to infinity, so to negative infinity, and right to infinity. And notice that they also are bounded right here by 1. They cannot drop below 0. Okay. And then um, number 5, um, not really a characteristic that we're really, really going to use as far as graphing them, but it tells us that it's 1 to 1, which means that it is going to have an inverse. And again, we're going to learn how to graph the inverses um, down the road a little bit in this chapter. And then um, Number six, the graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And again, that's what we just kind of pointed out that this line right here, it's never going to touch it. It's never going to cross it. It's its horizontal asymptote. It's bounded right there. The graph is not going to touch or cross at y equals zero. So some pretty important characteristics that will help us get these graphed. So to actually do one, uh, just starting from the basics. Now, the way these characteristics help us is, first of all, if I recognize that this is just a function in this form, b to the x power, I already know that this is going to cross through 1. I already know that it's not going to cross the x-axis because there is an asymptote here at y equals 0. And because the base is 2, I do know that it's going to be an increasing function. It's going to have that type shape. For the most part, just with the characteristics, we can almost get this graphed. But I need to know, I need some more points. You can't just, okay, going to cross through 0, 1, it's going to be increasing, just randomly draw a line that's just increasing. It does have specific points. Some are steeper than others. So we do need some specific points. And we do that just like we've learned how to graph everything else, and we set up a chart. Now, we kind of use 0 in the middle, 0 and 1. We know for sure that we have that point because the characteristics tell me that. And again, all I have to do is take my function, plug in 0 for x, and of course, we get 1. 
So again, you can just go ahead and, and put that in there, or you can do the math, but you're still going to always end up with zero and one. And then just as a good practice, you know, the more points we pick, the better. Just going to pick a couple to the left and a couple to the right. Now we are, because we're using exponentials, we are going to have to kind of draw back to our rules of exponents. Um, just for computational purposes and to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to start by plugging in the positive exponents. So if I start by plugging in 1 for x, we know that 2 to the first power is just going to be 2. So I have 1 and 2. If I plug in 2 for my exponent, and again, I'm just, I plugged in 0 here, I plugged in 1 here, plugging in 2 here, just the way we know how to graph. Doing that, that gives me 4. So I plugged in 2, I got 4. And plugging in uh, 3, keep my base the same, plugging in 3 for my exponent is going to give me 2 times 2 times 2, which is going to give me 8. So plugging in 3 gave me 8. Now, if I go through now and plug in my negative exponents, if I plug in a negative 1, of course, you can plug that in a calculator, and it's going to give you a decimal answer. It should give you a uh, 0.5. And that's technically, that's okay, because we've got to know how to plot these points. But you're not always going to be able to do that. So just going back and really quickly reviewing our rules of exponents, if it's negative in the numerator, we're going to take that down and make it positive. So really, this is just 1 half. So negative 1 gave me 1 half. If I plug in a negative 2, that's going to change that to 1 over 2 squared, positive 2. So that's going to be 1 fourth. And then plugging in a negative 3 here will make this 1 over 2 to the positive 3, which will give me 1 over 8. And you may notice here that if I plugged in 1, I got 2. When I plugged in negative 1, I got 1 half. So 2 over 1 and 1 half are reciprocals of each other. The 2 and the negative 2 gave me 4 and 1 over 4, which again are reciprocals of each other. And plugging in 3 and negative 3 gave me 8 and 1 over 8, which are also reciprocals. And you will see that pattern with all of them. Okay? So, plugging in our numbers, knowing how to do Either you're plugging it into your calculator using your exponential form, um, which with the negative exponents, we don't want to do that. We want to you know, list them and know how to convert them from negative exponents into positive exponents. So now we're ready to just plot these points. And again, we already know what kind of shape this graph is going to have. So if my math is incorrect anywhere, then I'm probably um, going to be able to know that by looking at the graph and go back and fix my math because we know that it's going to be increasing. So let's plot the points we have, 1 and 2, 2 and 4, and 3 and 8. And then to, to graph our fractions, we know that we're not going to be able to be exact, but we're just going to be close as we can. Um, negative 1 and 1 half, so left 1 and up halfway. Uh, negative 1 and, or negative 2 and a fourth, so negative 2 and a fourth. And then negative 3 and an eighth. And... I do have my graph increasing here, and there is my graph of 2 to the x power. Now this one doesn't ask specifically, but if I asked you to state the domain of this graph from the characteristics, we could do that without even looking at the graph. But looking at the graph, we can see that it goes to negative infinity and to positive infinity because there's arrows on either end. We also know by characteristics that the range is 0 to infinity, and we can see that the graph bottoms out here at 0 and goes up to infinity. Okay, so let's graph one that now has a fraction base to it. And these are actually going to work the exact same way. We still know that because this is in the form of b to just the x power, we know that it's going to go through the point 0 and 1, and this one is going to be decreasing because it's got a fraction base. But I do have this one point. We also know that it's still going to have the horizontal asymptote. It's not going to cross this line because it's got the exact same characteristics. And from here, we can just set up a chart just like we did the last one. 
We know we have 0 and 1, so we're going to pick just a couple numbers to the right, and we'll pick a couple numbers to the left. And we'll do the same thing, and we will go through and plug them in. On this one, again, I'm going to start, I like to just do my pauses first. If I plug in a 1, of course, we know that anything to the first power is just itself. If I plug in the 2, this is just the quotient. Um, to a power rule of rules of exponents, everything is going to get that exponent of 2. So I need to square the numerator and square the denominator, which gives me 1 fourth. And then plugging in 3 for my exponents means that I need to cube the numerator and cube the denominator, which is going to give me 1 over 8. Now previously from the last graph that we did, the 2 to the x power, we saw that whatever we got for the positives, that the negatives were reciprocals. If I followed that, that rule, then that means that negative 1 would give me 2, because 1 over 2 would flip to 2 over 1. Plugging in the negative 2 would give me, flip the 1 over 4 to 4 over 1, and the negative 3 would give me 8. Now that's just using the theories and, and looking at the pattern of what happened on the last example, but let's check that. To, there's a couple different ways we can approach this, but to take one half and plug it in to a negative exponent. Well, we can apply that negative exponent, which means the numerator gets the negative exponent and the denominator gets the negative exponent. We know that negative exponents, we have to convert them to positives, so the one and its exponent would go to the denominator, so it would become positive, and the 2 would go to the numerator, so its exponent would become positive, and you're left with 2 over 1, which is just 2, which is what we got. If I plug in the exponent of negative 2, that means the numerator gets the negative 2, the denominator gets the negative 2, so since all of these are negative exponents, move the negative exponent up to the top, move the negative exponent down to the bottom, which again gives me 4 over 1, which just gives me 4. And you can do the same thing for the exponent with the negative 3. It'll come out to be the exact same thing. Okay, so plot the points. We've already got 0, 1 plotted because we know it's supposed to be there. We have negative 1 and 2, negative 2 and 4, and negative 3 and 8, and then 1 and 1 half, 2 and a fourth, and 3 and an eighth, and it is decreasing, like the characteristics told me, which means my math is probably right if it fits the shape of what the characteristics told me. Again, on this one, it doesn't specifically ask us for um, domain and range, but the domain would be all real numbers on this one and the range would be 0 to infinity, so same characteristics. Okay, the other part of graphing um, exponentials, because what we've been doing is just being um, looking at how to graph them in the form of just b to the x power. Well, the transformations that we've done in this class in chapter um, 2, in a previous chapter, our transformations are still going to apply just like they did back then. And you can see, based on this chart, that the formulas haven't changed. Now the two that we're going to concentrate on the most is the vertical, which you can see hasn't changed. If you have your function, in this case, if you've got your exponential and your exponential, and we add a number to the end of it, that's going to shift the graph up. If we subtract a number off of it, then it's going to shift it down. So if I add 2, it's going to shift up 2. If I subtract 5, it's going to shift down 5. So not really anything new we have to cover, but just kind of refresh our memory on these formulas because it's been, you know, a couple chapters since we've had to actually do the transformation. So go ahead and refresh your memory. And then the horizontal, the horizontal is the left and right shift, which means this is what happens when we add or subtract the C into the function. We put actually put it into it. So you can see the difference. One of them, we add and subtract the c to the end of the equation. Here you can see the plus c and minus c is put 
into the function. It's actually put into the exponent. So that would shift it left and right. If we add c, we shift to the left. If we subtract c, we shift to the right. So same exact formulas um, as we've done before. So to give an example, we're going to start with the graph of 3 to the x. You've always got to have a starting point. Now before we would always use our common algebraic graphs. On these we do have to do a little bit more work because um, we can't just graph these from memorization like we can with the parabolas and um, the absolute values and things like that. But it does say use this graph, so I have to graph that one first. Just like we did on the previous example, we know that it's, I'm going to have 0 and 1. So I'm going to plug in a couple numbers uh, to the left and to the right. We'll just do uh, 1 and 2 and negative 1 and 2. Plugging in 1 gives me 3. Plugging in 2 gives me 9. And the only reason I dropped off the 3 here is because if I plug in a 3, that's going to give me 27. And that's going to be a little too large for my graph. So um, these five points that we're choosing here, that is sufficient for what we have. Plugging in my negative 1 would change that to 1 over 3 to the first power. So in other words, 1 third. And it's reciprocal there. Plugging in the negative 2 should give me 1 over 9. I've got to move that negative exponent down to the bottom to make it positive, and we do also get the reciprocal for negative 2. So graphing, we get 0 and 1, 1 and 3, 2 and 9, negative 1 and a third, negative 2 and a ninth. It is a base of 3, so it is increasing, and it's a little bit steeper than the one we had previously that was 2 to the x. Now, in order to use my transformation, I shouldn't have to plug anything in to graph 3 to the x plus 1. I just have to determine how does this plus 1 shift my graph of 3 to the x because this one is 3 to the x, this one has 3 to the x, the only thing that's different is there's a plus 1 since that plus 1 is inside the exponent, it's going to move it left or right because it's inside the function and since it's a positive 1, it's going to shift left 1 because it's always the opposite of what we would um, normally think when it's inside the function. If it's positive, we would think to the right, but it actually moves to the left. So all I'm going to do is take every single one of these points that I've got and move left one. So this one moves left one, this one moves left one, this one moves left one, left one, and left one. So remember on the characteristics that I gave you that they always have to cross the y axis at 1. Notice on the transformation it now crosses the y axis at 3. And that's why these characteristics that we went through previously only work for this function. Only if it's b to the x is it going to cross through 0, 1. And you can see that now with the transformations because we've now moved the graph. It's not going to necessarily cross through 0, 1 again. Okay, so we'll do one more. Now, starting with 2 to the x power, that is one that we have already graphed. That was our first example we graphed, so we can kind of refer back to that. We had gotten, of course, it passed through 0, 1, it passed through 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 3 and 8. And then we had negative one and a half, negative two and a fourth, negative three and an eighth. So just to save us a little bit of time, since that's one we've already graphed, we don't have to go back through and show our work again. Now, however, to graph using the transformation, if you wanted to set up a chart and plug in numbers for x, you could. You would still get the same graph, but that's why we have transformations. They're shortcuts. They're supposed to be easier. And that is 2x, and that minus 3 is behind the 2 to the x. Makes a big difference. So we've got a 2 to the x and a 2 to the x. Since this minus 3 is outside of my exponential, it's put to the end of that function, 
we know that that minus 3 is just going to be an up and down shift because it's outside of the function. And because it's negative, it follows the sign, so it moves down 3, which means I'm going to take the 0, 1 and move down 1, 2, 3. Take every single point and go down 3, down 3, and down 3. Be careful with the fractions because we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and it's still going to be in the, the half, halfway. The 1 fourth is going to go down 1, 2, 3, and the 1 eighth goes down 3. And you can see again, now my, um, my domain has not changed. Let's say I found the domain of the red one. The domain is still the same shape of the graph. Now, if the blue graph has a range because of the characteristics, we know the range is 0 to infinity. If all I did was move that graph down 3, guess what my range does? It moves down 3. And you can see that at 1, 2, negative 3 there, it's still going to keep the same shape. Everything just shifts. So my horizontal asymptote would also be at negative 3 because it just shifted everything. So you can still kind of use those characteristics um, in a way to actually apply that also to your transformations. If it shifts down, then your horizontal asymptote shifts down, your range shifts down. Your domain will never change because the graphs will always have the same shape. So they're going to have arrows on the left and arrows on the right. So that's the basics of how we're going to graph these exponentials. Um, very similar to almost just graphing straight lines. We're just going to plug in a chart, fill in our numbers, and let the math work from there.